You are not against us, champion of heaven. You made a way for all to answer in. Precious of me, precious of you are forward, you champion of heaven, you made a way for all to enter in, you made a way. You made a way. You make me brave. You make me brave. You call me out here, sure into the way. You make me brave. You make me brave. No fear can get me down. Promises you made. You make me brave. You make me brave. You make me brave. You You make me You
Father God, we bless you and we lift you up on high and we thank you for bringing us together in the spirit of business, Lord, so that we can exchange and so that we can build in our entrepreneurial journeys and become the people and the entrepreneurs that you created us to be. We pray, Lord, that you download to us, Lord, pour into us, give us any wisdom that we need for this meeting, Lord, as well as for any endeavor that we are working on in our lives. Father God, we pray that you bless this meeting in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. Let me open up the camera. Awesome. <clears throat> so I'm going to get started. I don't see anybody here, but at the very least, we'll have a recording of today's session so you guys can follow along at your own pace. So like I mentioned before, I did another video just talking about who this group is for, and I want everyone to feel welcome, all Christian entrepreneurs, I want you to feel welcome. Um, we are starting a book called Business by the Book by Larry Burkett, and um, the book, you can actually get the book on Kindle, and I would highly, highly suggest that you get the Kindle version uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, on the Kindle version, and with any book, you can do highlights, <laughs> but at least in your Kindle, um, you can highlight, just, you know, tap the word or whatever you're um, wanting to remember, tap it, drag, and then you'll see it highlighted. So you can highlight things, you can make notes as you go right within the app, which is really great. Um, <clears throat> also, Kindle has a free trial. Uh, Kindle Unlimited has a free trial going on right now, so you might want to try that. And the Kindle book of Business by the Book is actually $8.99. So you may find that um, beneficial if you are struggling financially. This is very much worth the investment. I'm starting to read it again from the beginning <clears throat> with you guys because there are some notes that I didn't get to take in the first version. So I just went through, pulled some notes, and um, hopefully we can uh, share and exchange with this. So I like to start off these meetings talking about any challenges or any wins for this week. Uh, for me, um, my biggest challenge right now is I have uh, students coming on board for, to do their summer internships. And what I didn't know is that I had to sign agreements through the school. So I have my own agreement from the company, from my company, um, that students have to sign and a lot of them have signed and sent it back but there's one student who is like okay now that we're done I'm gonna get the documents from the school to send to you and uh, I didn't know about this I'm totally fine with signing documents I just didn't know anyways I finally get the documents it's nine pages and I have something like 12 or 13 students coming on board. So imagine nine pages times 12 or 13. Obviously, I delegated that to my admin team and they're handling all of the filling of the forms and I just have to sign off. But that was particularly challenging because I didn't want to fall behind. But luckily, a lot of the students are starting May the 4th. So that's great. Um, that was my biggest challenge. My biggest win w is actually getting students on board. This is actually something I've been wanting to do for years and years is to start this program where it's like I'm training students and at the same time they're working on real world projects to get them that experience. One of the pains I always talk about is that when I was job hunting after I finished my PR certificate, everyone was telling me, well, we're not hiring you because you don't have enough experience. And my frustration was, well, how can I get experience if you're not hiring me? And that is a big part of the reason why I started my business. I was like, well, if you're not going to hire me, I'm starting my own business. <laughs> so here we are 15 years later, uh, starting a business out of spite. How terrible is that? 
anyways, so that is um, my big win. We have 12 or 15 students. I've been wanting to do this forever just to have an internship program. I don't like calling them interns, so I call it my associate program. And um, my goal is to start a student run agency, completely run by students. And I'm doing this because Number one, students need to build experience and they need to be trained in the real world, not just in class and for academics. And number two, I have a passion for a small business, startup business, personal brands, boutique brands, um, anyone who has a budget less than $3,000 a month, let's say, uh, even $300 a month. Um, I have a passion for working with businesses at that level because it's an opportunity to come in and use all my God-given creativity to help them to establish their brands. So um, I love I love working with those level of businesses, but the um, other side of that is that we don't always, um, we're not always able to accommodate. So at least with the students coming on board they're able to help with that because they're not necessarily looking for pay they're looking more to build experience so that is the challenge and the win for me for this week um so moving on to business by the book i keep talking about this book because i just i love it i started reading it got to chapter nine and i'm like let me stop and start over with all of you once you get the book um i don't know who has the book or not but you're still welcome to join the conversation um, <clears throat> so I went through, I, I have some notes from the introduction as well as from chapter one. So starting with the introduction, um, I love where he says, this isn't a book for the, for the timid Sunday only Christians. God makes it clear that he wants Christians who are willing to follow the straight path, not those seeking the path of least resistance. If you're willing to follow God's word, it lays out the straight and narrow. And one of the things that he says in the other chapters is that there are some who like to pick and choose the things that they like to do from the Bible, pick some and, and leave some behind. And when it comes to following Christ, it's an all or nothing deal. <laughs> and you know what? Don't feel bad because a lot of us, we're getting to the point where we're doing like 80% of all right now and we have maybe 20% to go. So don't feel bad. So we're not all there. But the, the point is that you are striving. The goal is that you're striving to get to the point where you're all in. So I really like that. And so how it applies to business is that um, as we're coming across God's wisdom on how to run and build our business, uh, it's important that we adhere to everything. It's not about saying, well, I don't like this one thing, so maybe I won't do that. It's actually, no, you have to do all of it. Uh, another note says, we're instructed, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. That's Proverbs 3, verse 5. The purpose of business by the book is to help you to trust in the Lord in all your business life. So if you're trusting in God's word, and you believe his word to be truth, then it just makes sense that we lean on him for everything, for every major business decision, for every minor business decision, no matter what it is, we're leaning on him. And so it's really, that message spoke to me because he's talking about um, trusting in the Lord. And that's one thing that God is working on me. I'm actually ending all my prayers with saying, I love you and I trust you. And this has grown in me over time and I feel my trust building in him. So the more that we know that we can trust in the Lord, we know we can trust in his word to guide us in our business. So moving on to chapter one. So chapter one is called a radical approach to business management. Radical. Do we have any radical Christians? If you are in here, just give me a hands up. Um, so I found it interesting to note that um, prior to the 20th century, business courses and indeed business schools themselves were based on biblical principles. Business courses and business schools were based on biblical principles. And at some point along the way, that all went out the window. And it, it actually brings me some comfort and reassurance to know that at least we were starting off on the right path and we have something to reference back to. So it's really good to know that um, this is something that it's not new. It's not just us doing it, <laughs> Christianpreneurs, but this is something that had started a long time ago um, in an effort to help businesses build on a very strong foundation. So that was, that was really reassuring. Um, another highlight. Too much easy money eventually makes itself known by the way of inflation, which is nothing more than a surplus of easy money in the hands of willing buyers who want to spend. So this makes me think of our situation right now. 
how many of us have received some of that CERB money or that's or some of that um those wage subsidies and things like that and we're getting a ton of an influx of money just to help us to get by in this economy but um a lot of us have to be careful some of us are going for loans banks are giving forty thousand dollar loans right now for businesses just to help them through and sorry my hair is a mess today <laughs> it's been a long day um this is how you look at the end of the day on wednesday uh getting back to the point um how many of us are you know taking advantage of these forty thousand dollar loans and things like that and the first part of business by the book talks about debt and how god doesn't want us to be in debt and it takes a look at the um the american deficit there's something like six trillion dollars in debt and they're borrowing 150 billion to cover mostly the interest <laughs> okay and it just it just shows how things can get out of hand and so I like that he pointed that out about um, not being in debt. I actually like that that's the first thing because a lot of us might rush to say, well, I have a business. I have to go and take money out or borrow money from somewhere. And before we know it, we're owing money before we even begin to make money. So I like the idea of stressing the fact that God doesn't want us to be in debt. Um, <clears throat> the next thing is... Yes, yeah, so the one principle that caught my attention most vividly was that God's people should be debt free. Too much debt makes the business vulnerable to interest rate swings. So we know <laughs> once the interest starts going, it might look good right now, like the banks are offering all kinds of loans at great interest rates right now, but when the economy sways, so does your interest rate. And then where are you? Doesn't you don't know where your business is going to be? two, three, four, five years from now. And if you have these long-term loans that could suddenly spike in interest, you know, where are you going to be? So you have to be very, very careful for that. I'm not saying don't, um, you know, take out any loans or credit lines. Sometimes it's warranted depending on the business that you have. We just have to be very careful. And I would say seek God <laughs> on it. Just always any decision like that. If you have to borrow any major, even a minor amount, even if it's a hundred dollars, ask God, God, should I borrow this money? Is it really going to benefit me? Is there, should I wait? Is there another opportunity coming where I can use this money in another way or get this money in another way? So seek God on that. Um, I don't think he's saying that debt is bad. I don't believe debt is bad it's just when you have too much debt or you have unwarranted debt like unnecessary debt that's where it becomes a problem and then when you don't have a plan to pay it back suddenly you're borrowing money just to be able to pay the interest which is a really bad place to be so you want to be careful about debt um Let's see, the next note, it's a shame that instead of taking the relative prosperity of the 90s as an opportunity to pay down debt, so I have to stop right there because one of the things I'm doing with this CERB money is I'm paying down debts and taxes, debts and taxes. I'm just putting it right back into the economy because last thing I want is that I have this opportunity for all this money and I'm not using it to pay back. So he's saying it's a shame that instead of taking the relative prosperity of the 90s or the relative prosperities of this pandemic as an opportunity to pay down debt, American business consumers and their government have actually increased their borrowing, right? Once the economy cycles down again, as it is inevitably, as it inevitably always does, bankruptcies will set new records. So we have learned this lesson since the recession of 2008, where um, lots of people were filing for bankruptcy, lots of people were foreclosing on their homes because they borrowed a bunch of money that they couldn't pay back. And this is where you don't wanna be. God is, God. I don't think you can bless something like that. You wanna always, always manage your money or manage his money in a way where you're being responsible and you're always able to pay your debts if you have any. Uh, God's word sets up a whole structure by which a business is to operate, a foundation. You can build a business or a house without a sound foundation, but when the wind blows and the waves come, it will collapse. God's word is the rock upon which a business must be built. So I think that is mentioned in Matthew 7, 24 and 25, sorry, 24. I think I have 24 to 27 built but it says therefore whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them i will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain descended the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them 
will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. Not only did it fall, but great was its fall. Because some of us, we know better, but we don't do better. I'm guilty of it too. Don't feel bad. I am guilty of it too. So um, it's basically just saying, you know, build your house on a rock. Build your business on a rock, on, a, on the foundation of God's word and his guidance and his wisdom. That's all that's saying. Going back to the notes. Um, so when it comes to debt, so this, the book references America a lot, but it doesn't mean that Canada is excluded. We have our own debt. I don't think we're six trillion dollars in debt, but we do have a lot of debt. And this concerns us as businesses because we rely on the fluidity and the prosperity of the economy to keep our businesses going. When the economy is good, business is good for us because people are spending their buying and they want to improve their own businesses or their own brands or their own lives. So they're investing in us in an effort to invest in themselves. And so we want there to be a healthy economy so that, you know, money is flowing. Um, so in terms of the debt, he's, he's asking, is there hope? Can the cycle be reversed? And he says, without a doubt, but only if God's people would turn to his way and be willing to be counted in his camp without compromise, without compromise. So this goes back to the message of do it all or not at all. Like, I, I won't say not at all. It's all or nothing. <laughs> because once you're on the path, you're good. But if you're saying, I'm going to do this, but I'm not going to do that, that's where you get into a really place of misalignment with God and his word. And that's where you don't want to be. All right. So there are, um, there are some study guide questions. So one of the verse, the very first questions refers to a story that he tells at the beginning of chapter one. And the long story short of that story is that there were two business partners. They're not business partners, but one was working for the other. So let's say there's the boss and the employee. And the employee was actually getting paid more than the boss. <laughs> the boss had trained him up over five years uh, to, and he was grooming him to take over the business and he was doing so good at his job and everybody loved him that the employee was getting paid more than the boss and the boss had no problem with that. But then one day the employee walks in and offers his resignation. And when the boss asked him about it, he just said he had to go and he actually got a little bit irate at one point because he just kept asking him like, what's the problem? Why are you leaving? And in the end, he just let it go. He actually threw a party for him when he was going away because he was such a great employee. Only come to find out some years later that the employee actually started his own business, which was the same exact business as the boss. So this employee left, became his own business, and was a competitor to his boss. How sneaky is that? <laughs> okay. So what we find in the story is that at one point, um, something starts going wrong with the employee's business to the point where he's getting lawsuits <laughs> over his his product whatever he created and the boss saw this and he prayed to god about it and found that you know what he actually went to buy the product of the employee and found the problem and told the employee what the problem is with this product so that he can get back to good press and no lawsuits and you know good business now the question is what would you have done you're grooming someone to take over your business one day. It's five years in, you've been grooming this person. And they turn around and they're like, you know what, I'm going to leave. Strike number one. <laughs> number two, they start their own business. And it's exactly, they're a competitor to you now. They've actually taken your product, copied your product, and they're selling that. That's strike number two. Um, and then have the nerve to not make it properly. So they're getting lawsuits and stuff like that strike number three but then the boss through his graciousness helps him by buying the product and showing him what the problems are what would you have done so you don't have to answer here obviously you can send me a message you can um answer in the group i will you know share your message as much as possible but what would you have done would you have been so gracious i don't know if i would have gone as far as helping him to fix it I just would have not paid attention from the moment he's like, I'm leaving and I can't get you to stay. 
and then you start another business and it's a competitor, I would really just sit back. I, I wouldn't do much. I can't say that I would go so far as to help you fix it. And these are the kind of things that God is training us in. It's this, it's this graciousness because he has this graciousness towards us in that when we mess up and we do things wrong, first of all, he's already paid for that. We've already, I mean, Jesus has already paid for that on our behalf. And he is so gracious that he is forgiving and he will help us, even though we're not doing the right thing or we're doing something wrong because he loves us and he's God. So that's something to talk about. What would you have done? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so what does Jesus promise? That's going back to Matthew 7, 24 to 25. And I hope you highlighted that. Matthew 7, I'll read it again. Verse 24, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock and that, and the rain descended, the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and did not fall for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended, the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Sorry, I had to keep reading that because I'm like, I always have to <laughs> make sure I'm not missing anything. But they're looking particularly at verse 24 and 25. So what is God promising us in this verse? I'm going to say that he's promising that our house will not fall as much as the rain comes down and bad things happen, we're not, we're not gonna fail because we are walking in him. We are building everything on a, on a foundation, a strong foundation that will not fail no matter what or how bad the storm is. So that's, to me, that's the promise that he's giving us there. Um, so the next question in the study guide is, in what way can the economic cycle be reversed? And that's what I just said about First of all, build your house on a rock, follow, follow God's wisdom in all things. Even if you get into a bad situation following God's word, it's likely for a purpose, but you have to continue on with it to get out on the other side and to see what that purpose is. So whenever you want to reverse, um, you know, could be the economic cycle, could be any financial trouble you got yourself into, could be any business partnership you got yourself into. Whenever you want to reverse that, go to God. Think about it. He's God. <laughs> He's the most powerful person, thing, everything on earth. He can reverse whatever situation you get yourself into, and he can take on any burden that you want to put onto him. So it's really really a good idea to walk with him in all that you're doing, especially when it comes to financially with your business, turn to him for everything, pray on it. God, should I borrow this $50? Uh, God, should I give this $50? Should I invest here? It can go both ways. Um, <clears throat> last question. Can you recall making a decision that was perceived as against the norm, but, but that you knew was right? Do you tend to, okay, so I'll leave, I'll start with that question. Can you recall making a decision that was perceived as against the norm, but that you knew was right? So think of the example of the story I just told. It's against the norm to help your competitor fix their problem so that they can make money. Um, but you know, it's the right thing to do because you don't want to see people have these lawsuits and, and they go under, suddenly they can't feed their families. I guess when you think of the long-term effects of some of these things to the point where it's like, the business closes down. Tons of people lose jobs. Um, now the family can't be fed. They have to sell their home. Where are they going to live? On the streets? Uh, you know, when you think of it in that sense, now that I'm saying it out loud, okay, maybe I would have helped because I don't want to see hundreds of people lose their job. I don't want to see a family living on the streets um, and in hardship. So if me helping just help you tweak your little problem is going to help you and your employees and your family, <clears throat> I could see why. I could see why he did that. Um, and do you tend to separate your business activities from your personal, from your personal witness and ministry? So this is what Christianpreneurs is all about. This is the essence of Christianpreneurs. It's your business. So it says what business activities and your personal witness and ministry. 
your business activities, and your personal witness and ministry. And we have kept these apart for so long. Like there's this on the side, <laughs> I'm going to church on Sundays or I read my Bible. But then when I'm at work or when I'm among friends, you don't really hear so much about that. And life especially a life with Christ is all about integrating the two. There's no, I don't have a business if I don't have God. I don't have a family if I don't have God. I don't have a house if I don't have God. It's all filled and made beautiful um, through his presence. And so if there are any of you who feel like you are separating the two, <clears throat> talk to me about it. I want to know about it. I want to know how that's working for you. Um, do you feel like a discomfort or, or a misalignment or you might feel sometimes like you're not being real because you're one person, you know, outside of work or outside of business and you're another person at work or at business. Um, one of the things that I used to do a long time ago was start my meetings with prayer. Uh, I don't do that so much anymore because <laughs> I was doing it with a colleague who he would find us the clients and, um, uh, most of his clients were from the church. And so it was really, really great to open up the meeting in prayer. And that's the kind of thing where you're really integrating your faith and your business. And I'm not saying for us all to go and do that, but maybe before a meeting, you go to the bathroom quietly in, in a private place and you pray to God that this meeting goes well. So it's an opportunity for us to really think about how can I integrate God more in my business? How can I, how can I bring him into my business more? For some of us, it might be, praying every morning before like you sit at your desk before you flip open your laptop or turn o turn on your computer you sit there and you say a prayer say god guide me give me your wisdom today let me know what i can do to bring glory to your name or to serve you or to serve someone else um just to make sure that he sets your frame of mind for the day and that you are working in pace with him and not trying to be too far ahead or fall too far behind um reading scripture every day for sure morning and night if possible uh worship I've taken worship to the next level, okay? Every morning, my worship music comes on and I am worshiping in my bed until I'm finally able to get up and get ready for the day. Um, I mean, there's a number of ways to integrate God into your business. And I, I even hate saying it like that. I hate saying integrating him in, like he's not already there. <laughs> he's in everything and he's everywhere and he's all around us. And it's just about us acknowledging that he's there and that we can turn to him and lean on him, right? So... That's all I have for today. I thought this might be a lively discussion with some new faces, but that is fine. We will look forward to next week. Um, we meet every Wednesday at 7 p.m. The book we're reading is called Business by the Book. I'm going to share it again in the Facebook group. If you're not on the Facebook group, it's uh, facebook.com slash groups slash Christianpreneurs. And um, <clears throat> everyone all christian entrepreneurs are welcome to join christians are welcome to join as well if you want to see what's going on if you want to learn more about being a christian entrepreneur um i mean you're already it <laughs> but if you want to see how we act how we operate then you're definitely welcome to join and invite a friend all right thanks for joining thanks for watching take care <laughs>